Ingskakel op die groot ontbijt, saam met ons vanochtend, daar is onlangs baie berig oor die waterkrisis in Rustenburg, en dan specifiek waar die mense nou sit met die breinwater, soos wat ons nou nou ook gesê het, en inwoners is baie ongelukkig oor hierdie situasie, nou vanochtend gesels ons met David Magai, die is die woordvoerder van Magali's Water, en dan ook Rustenburg Municipaliteit Raadslid Gert de Duplessie, en hulle sluit by ons aan om ons meer oor hierdie situasie te vertel. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Gerd, let's start with you. Uh, what's the situation in Rustenburg at the moment? And where did it all start? Please inform our, our viewers about the situation. Uh, Good morning, Frans Rappier. Good morning, David. Good morning, all the listeners. Uh, yes, in Rustenburg, uh, we have got two main suppliers. It's Randwater and Magali's Water. Now, this specific uh, matter that's being discussed is related to Magali's water supply, of which I'm involved as a ward councillor for Ward 14 in Rustenburg mm. uh, since 2013. We are uh, experiencing uh, water supply problems from uh, Magali's water site, and recently we had the situation where there was a message posted by Magali's water concerning the brown water issue uh, from the supply of Magali's water. Mm. So is the issue the brown water or the problem that there is no water or intermittent uh, situations? Oh, that is uh, both situations. Uh, brown water from a Gallis water site is a thing that happened just now. And uh, the water supply issue is uh, a very uh, constant problem that we are experiencing, uh, that residents are with water sometimes for a whole day or even... Mm. Uh, some consecutive days. Gert, baie dankie dat jy Engels praat. Ons praat hier dat Engels om het allemaal in die gesprek uh, kan deelneem. Uh, uh, David, um, there was a statement put out by Magali's Water after this incident uh, that around about on the 28th of December uh, there has been improvement in uh, the water supply from Magali's water side, the bulk supply, uh, to Rissenburg uh, municipality and the Royal Bafu King uh, administration. Um, could you tell us maybe what caused this specific brown, discolored water in, um, situation uh, during the holiday season? Uh, good morning once more, and uh, thank you to you for the opportunity, and uh, good morning to the viewers and listeners. Indeed, it is true, uh, just after Christmas, our scientific uh, services laboratory informed us that uh, in the course of their daily operations of monitoring the uh, Falcop supply scheme that supplies the Rustenburg area as well as Royal Buffalo Gang, there were anomalies in the testing of the water that we sample from time to time in the system. And despite the fact that there were no health risks, there was this persistent uh, brown color in the in the water but what we then did was to undertake an investigation as a bulk water a supplier and what we found out was that there were a high concentration of manganese in the raw water which our treatment processes could not sufficiently deal with and the reason for that is that the water that gets into rustenberg to the royal buffalo area as well as Moses Kotane and the Tabazimbi local municipality in uh, the neighboring Limpopo province come from the crocodile waste catchment area. And this uh, water resource uh, is performs part of the Hart Beer Sport Dam, uh, whose issues are well known. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe for the benefit of your viewers and listeners, the Hart Beer Sport Dam is the most polluted uh, raw water source in the country. As a result, as Mahali's water, we are finding it a bit challenging in as far as treating the raw water to portable levels because it means we have to double our efforts and use a lot of money, particularly as it relates to uh, the treatment processes in purchasing chemicals and so forth. So given the state of the raw water in the crocodile catchment west area, 
it was not surprising that at some point our own treatment processes were going to have shortcomings because we are dealing with the worst raw water that you can find in South Africa. Mm -hmm. But indeed, we have been able to uh, put mitigation measures in place and the system has improved. As I speak to you now, residents of Rustenburg, as well as those in the Royal Bafokeng Area Administration, uh, receive potable water, which is of the highest quality with no taste or odor or even color. So at this stage, the situation has improved to the extent that there is there's, there's healthy, safe, potable drinking water to all these administrations. Mm. Yes, that is so. You you must remember that as a bulk water supplier, in terms of the legislation, we have the full responsibility of ensuring that all of the water that we treat and supply to the industries, to the mines and the municipalities is water that has been certified as safe for human consumption. And because of the, regi of the regime within the water sector, we are obliged to furnish the Department of Water and Sanitation with those results on a regular basis. And those results are also audited by the Office of the Auditor General just to ensure that there was strict compliance because when it comes to water quality, we really have no room to compromise. That's good to hear, David. But, Gert, what are some of the concerns or questions from the community side then about the situation? Yeah, I believe that uh, not all the problems related to brown water and even to the water supply is actually uh, uh, Mahali's water supply problem as such. Uh, I also believe that Rustenburg local municipality uh, has a responsibility in this regard as far as maintenance of infrastructure is concerned, because even without this uh, report by Mahali's Water, we receive uh, regular uh, complaints from uh, the community. For instance, what appears on the system now, on the TV now, is a, a valve that's leaking for three years in such a way that the resident at that address at the corner of Hard Pier and Wattle Avenue even built a channel with bricks to get the water away from his lawn, not damaging his lawn. And millions of liters of water must have uh, been lost here since it was reported by me for the first time on the 20th of January 2021. That's three years back. Gert, so if Rust, if Rust, yes? It, 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 it seems like it's, it's a problem that most municipalities in South Africa are struggling with. It's maintenance. But it's not only maintenance, it's also planning ahead. And it's mm. also finishing projects that have been planned and have been started already. You refer now to valves leaking. This is a, uh, water leaks is, is, a, mm. is a regular occurrence that isn't always uh, 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 fixed by municipalities. But there is also a water treatment plant that has been started in 2017 and has not been completed yet. Mm. That is correct, yes, uh, because that uh, was supposed to add uh, 12 mega liters of water, we, what we call the, the uh, purified water to the mines, which would have resulted that that uh, 12 mega liter of water provided to the mines, mm. that Rustenburg mm. local municipality residents would have uh, more 12 uh, mega liter water more for the residents if that could sure. be completed. That's really disturbing to hear. David, maybe we can just start with you again. I believe that some of our viewers are still asking why the water is brown. And I, I uh, know that you mentioned earlier about the manganese that's in the water. But is it only the manganese or is it because of the chemical processes uh, involved? What's the reason for the brown water? Well, because we are obliged to treat uh, the water by way of disinfecting it, making sure that there's nothing untoward that will eventually find its way uh, to the consumer on the other end of the value chain. Mm. The brown color was as a result of the high concentration of manganese when uh, the raw water came into contact 
with the chemicals that we are using in the various stages of uh, the water treatment processes within our water treatment plant. So for instance, if your manganese levels are lower than what was the case late last year, the chemical reactions will happen, all of the dosing, the chlorination will happen, and by the time the water reaches the consumer at the tap point, the water is colorless, doesn't have any bad taste, and it can be used without any fear. But in, in, in an event where there are concentrations, for example, as was the case of manganese, then the brown color is a chemical reaction uh, of the manganese when it now came into contact with other chemicals that we are using in our water treatment processes. But we did say that last year when we issued the first uh, public notice was that despite the fact that the water had a brown color, even if you were to drink it, there was nothing mm -hmm that could really, you know, uh, compromise your health. Because at that particular point, we had done a number of tests through our scientific services laboratory, and as it related to the health risk, there was mm. nothing scientifically that indicated that there could be a danger in consuming the water, other than the fact that it had that brown color. According to the regulations, what's the, what's the percentage of manganese that's supposed to be or can be in the water for it to be declared safe? It's it's very, very less. It's, you are not even looking at about a percent. It's at a zero point. I, I can't quite quote the figure currently. 0 0.3 very, milligrams per litre. Yeah, it's a, ve it's a very, very small concentration. So the moment it exceeds that concentration, then obviously if your chemicals or your water treatment processes is up to standard, either the taste or the color will be the first sign that there is something amiss. And it was at that point when we saw at the point of distribution that the color was uh, brownish that we then acted swiftly without even having to wait for the consumers mm. to complain first to say we have picked up something, but let us just try to act with the necessary speed to establish what the issues were. And then it occurred to us that the water as it came through uh, into the Falcop Dam, we are actually abstracting in this particular dam, forms the wider network of the Crocodile Cashman West area, which I referred to earlier, which the Hard Baseport Dam is central to. We then tested the water in the dam. Then we were able to detect that, in fact, it is as a result of the high concentrations of manganese in the raw water before we start to abstract, put it into the water treatment plant for processing before we can distribute for consumers to drink. David, do you live in Rustenburg, uh, the vicinity? Yes, I live in Rustenburg proudly so, and do, I use the water. Do you water drink the water? Do you? Definitely. I, I drink Mahalis water, I make tea, I cook, I even bath with the water that uh, the company that I represent produces to Rustenburg. So I can yeah. proudly say I, I've been a resident of Rustenburg for over six years now. So when I talk about the water situation, when I say there is a water supply interruption, because I have a house in Rustenburg. In some instances, mm. I'm affected by that. Mm. Uh, mm. David, just, just, it's fascinating. And, uh, the manganese content that's higher than, than accepted levels in water can cause neurotoxicity in people, in animals, especially in children. And I'm talking about numbness, weakness, uh, 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 problems with cognitive uh, uh, effect, uh, intellectual capacity impairment, uh, disillusion, and uh, it's, a, it's a terrible array of, of symptoms. Um, the, the, the control of water, the monitoring of the water that's going out of the Bechalis uh, uh, process, uh, um, how regularly is that controlled regularly? We, 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 we do it on an hourly basis. So in terms of our own you know, norms and standards, uh, within a period not exceeding two hours, we need to sample the water that leaves the water treatment plant. So if a person works an eight or 10 hour shift, you can just do a quick math and see how many intervals of regular sampling you need to do. And all of that data is collated by our scientific services laboratory. And that information is loaded into a system that is monitored by the Department of Water and Sanitation because as part of our compliance, we are obliged to do the regular sampling in testing and analysis of the water that we are supplying to communities. And over and above that, like I said earlier, all of that information as well is independently submitted to the Office of the Auditor General, where they then undertake their own independent process to verify the authenticity of that particular information. Mm -hmm. So within our area of operation in, in, in Northwest, in Limpopo and parts of Gauteng, we can't be saying to communities, continue to consume water that Mahalis water produces while we are not even sure of the state and or quality of the water that we produce. And all of that okay. information 
is available to the public should the need arise for us to avail it. Yeah, I, I must admit, I, uh, nowhere in your statements has there been any indication on what the actual results of the test were. We would like to find the, out about that later on, if you could send it through. We'd appreciate that. Gert, I can with you uh, we, we obviously need to talk about to Gert as well. Gert, uh, are you, you drinking water in Rustenburg at this stage from the tap? Yeah, I must be honest, I'm actually using my borehole water at this stage for drinking water, the municipality water I'm only using for uh, washing purposes. And Gert, uh, there are issues, like we said earlier, we alluded to the municipality, that, that, that administrative-wise, uh, management-wise, there might have been issues. As a member uh, of, 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 as a raadslid van Rustenburg, uh, could you maybe tell us, um, would, for instance, uh, uh, breaks in, in, in electricity supply causing reservoirs to, to go uh, to below normal levels and, and, and getting sediment into the system, could that also contribute to the problems in Rustenburg? Yeah, currently it is not affecting Rustenburg as such as far as water supply is concerned, except when Magali's water is experiencing uh, power outage problems uh, to supply water from uh, their side. But within Rustenburg itself, as far as the uh, 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 reservoirs are concerned, supplying within the Rustenburg system, it happens very often that uh, water supply will be affected by electricity problems. Uh, mostly the water supply is being affected by uh, burst pipes uh, to be fixed within the Rustenburg system and Rustenburg not having the sufficient uh, 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 vehicles and infrastructure to fix burst to pipes. To attend within, to the problems, yeah. To attend to the problems. And for that matter, I need to mention that it happened on an almost daily basis that Rustenburg is telling the residents that they only have one TLB available, and if there's more than one burst pipe, it take up to 48 hours before some of these burst pipes are being fixed. Gert, and during that period, we are water out of is time. Good. Unfortunately, we have to stop it. Unfortunately, we wish we could talk about this another half an hour at least. Gert and David, thank you very much for contributing to our conversation this morning and taking part and being honest and open about it. Uh, best of luck to Machali's water. We know it's challenging. We know it's the dirtiest water in the country, most polluted, but it is the job of Machali's water to treat that water. And we expect the public and the people that are your clients mm. obviously expect that you would. David, we'd love to share the information that you have with, uh, that you can give us with the rest of the public. Uh, we believe that you also have an opinion. You have a say in this, and we would like to hear your opinion. Gert, bye, thank you. As a raadslid, met ons geselsit. We know uh, the municipality has a lot of e e issues. Even Tienison, for instance, in the Free State, has been without water since mm. 13th of December. This is not an isolated issue. Bye, thank you, Gert, that you have no part to stand up for. You not a raadslid. But thank you for you also speaking to us about the situation in, Rundberg, in Rustenburg. Let's hope it gets resolved very soon for, for all parties, yeah. the bulk users, uh, the administrations, and as well as the users, the, the end users, the public, that this problem gets resolved rather quickly. Thank you very much.